Hello again and welcome to Matzobrix. Today we're talking about sensors. There are four elements in uh, Lego train layout automation that are absolutely important. The first one is controlling uh, the motor of the locomotive, of course. The second one is switching uh, a switch. Uh, third one is setting a signal and, of course, the uh, fourth one, uh, and last but not least, is detecting the position of a train on the layout. We do that with sensors. Traditionally, uh, we've been using sensors from uh, 40 bricks, for example, or Trix bricks. These sensors work uh, uh, as an infrared uh, detector uh, on an optical basis. Uh, that's basically what we have and uh, what we've been using, but as you probably know, uh, there is a lot of trouble associated with those sensors. First of all, if you attach them to the track, they never fit. No? Uh, they are either too close to the track, so they are uh, hit by a larger or wider vehicle, uh, or they are too far away, uh, and, they then, and then they don't detect the uh, uh, vehicles anymore or you want to attach them in a curve uh, and that doesn't really fit because large and long locomotives will hit the sensor when they go around the curve and, they, and then you have to put it uh, or attach it uh, a little bit uh, uh, farther away and then it's not detecting anything else anymore. It's highly dependent on the light situation that you have in your room and that may change of course over time. Uh, and uh, they, they really have problems to detect dark and black vehicles, especially when they have uh, complicated shapes like steam engines. Uh, they cannot be really reliably detected by those uh, sensors. Uh, and that is uh, really painful, especially when you've got a, a large layout. If a sensor has no contact to a locomotive, that usually is a crash on the layout uh, and uh, you have to reset a lot of trains until you've resolved that mess. So sensor detection is absolutely crucial. If you have 20 trains, 50 or 60 blocks on your layout and you want to uh, move those trains concurrently, automatically, without a lot of hassle and worry about. So that was really a reason for us to look into this uh, topic a little bit more uh, and we got some information and a lot of uh, uh, emails regarding that and uh, especially one friend of mine from Holland uh, told me that uh, I should probably try to use uh, magnetic sensors, they're called read sensors, uh, and use them for train detection. That's what we did. We have built those little sensors here with those uh, tiny little Lego pieces with uh, holes uh, on the side. Uh, they uh, have exactly the right uh, shape and size for a small read sensor. The read sensor has a contact on both uh, sides. Um, you uh, put a cable uh, there. Uh, and uh, just uh, put that little switch, magnetic switch, uh, onto your controller and bring it to your automation software, like in control or uh, rock rail. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, look at this. These are tiny little magnets, 5 mm in diameter. And if we go close to the sensor, you see that it has contact. The signals here are just some, you know, test lights to see if the sensor had contact or not. And you see it's working pretty well. If you release it from the screwdriver, it's even working better. And that's what we're going to do in our tracks. So, having this technology, how do we apply it to our Lego system? We need to put those magnets into our trains. 
And that's what we did. Have a look at the diesel engine here. It's a V200. Uh, presently running with uh, three wheels only. Uh, so. And we need to put the magnets into this uh, wheel set here. How do we do that? Very simple. Of course, we try to put it as low as possible, as close as possible to the read sensor. Then we need fewer magnets, of course. And what we have is those technique bricks here. The hole of a, a Lego technique brick or general, uh, in general, the hole in the Lego system has a little bit less than five millimeters in diameter. So we need a screwdriver and make sure that it has exactly five millimeters. So that's a five millimeter drill here. And um, then we put the magnets inside the Lego Technic bricks and can attach it to our wheel set. And now it's in the middle of the track, very uh, at the bottom of the locomotive and exactly in the middle of the track. That's important actually. And if we go over the sensor, you see it's working, it's working perfectly. I can do this 10,000 times and I can assure you it's going to detect the magnet uh, at a success rate of 100%. It really works. I didn't have a single miss yet, and I have done a lot of experiments already. So this is really reliable technology, especially when you compare it to this here. This can go in the trash. We don't need it anymore. And we use those magnetic sensors instead. They work better. Okay. So, let's have a look how we do that with the uh, Emerald Express. Okay, come on. There it is. The Emerald Express has a little wheel set in the front. Looks like this. Also perfect for putting magnets under the loco. Uh, in the original set from Lego, there is a Technic, a double Technic brick of four Dutch each, uh, four Dutch each, and it's sitting here in the middle. If we exchange that with a six stud Technic brick, drill the last hole uh, up to five millimeters again. Put our magnets inside. We've got a perfect solution. If we are running over the track, it's 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 even right at the front of the loco, so so the sensor is detecting the loco very quickly. Works absolutely perfectly. We can do this again ten thousand times. Works. So we've got a sensor in the Emerald Express which is great. Okay, goodbye. You can go back to the parking position. So that's quite good. And uh, the next thing we, did, we actually discovered is that a standard train motor also um, makes the sensor uh, having contact. So if you don't want to hustle around with magnets, a normal train motor will also make the sensor report in contact. That's pretty good, I, I would say, and um, makes the technology even more interesting for us. So uh, let's have a look uh, at how the trains are going then. Uh, we start with the diesel engine, the German diesel engine V200. Also, 
understand those calls very well. And the Emerald is also hitting all the contacts as well. As you might have seen, um, the last chamber, it's the enter chamber for the last block, uh, acts as a braking chamber. So the train will become slower when it approaches the stop. That's, uh, so it's pretty good to have as much sensors as possible on your layout because, because you can make your trains uh, go slower when they approach the time. And blim. So, what an improvement compared to our old optical sensors, which are here in the rubbish bin already. Uh, I think we are really on the uh, edge of a new technology life cycle here when it comes to sensors in the, in the LEGO train system. I don't see a future for optical sensors anymore, as we have those read sensors that really are better in any aspects. More powerful, more reliable, easier to build and cheaper to build probably. So I believe uh, we have a really good hit here and uh, I will now get rid of all of my optical sensors to be honest uh, and um, work with those read sensors only. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, we have uh, big plans for this year, as you know, to build a large layout uh, and uh, we need uh, some more technological research on a couple of topics uh, to be able to have that automated in a style that really works. Uh, we definitely have some tasks to make this more reliable and uh, also more powerful. So that will be an issue to do that. And uh, I probably set up some more videos about all this controlling signal and switch stuff. Because many people have uh, contacted me that they want to have more information about that. So whatever there will be, it will be definitely exciting in the future. So stay tuned and make sure that you subscribe to our social media channels, Facebook and YouTube, uh, to um, be sure that you don't miss any news on Lego train information. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.